Mm. That's them, and they made Finger Eddie in every Danish newspaper. They've been busting a lot of uh, hashish dealers. And because of this, Gordon uh, says, Eddie, look, you can't stay in my studio. You're way too hot. So Eddie's got to weigh his options. So, <sighs> well, he's got the uh, sell money from Gwen, $14,000 in the Danish bank. Huh? So he refer returns to Denmark to uh, face the music and walks into the police station to, uh, to see what the fuss is all about. The worst that can happen, they could expel him from Denmark. Wrong. Yeah. And bust him on the spot for buying and selling hashish. Yeah, those three Danish musicians, he sold a few grams of hash uh, to uh, mm, turn Eddie in. Yeah, fingered in to save themselves. Uh, his name, Good Finger Eddie, in their books. Yeah. Eddie's honest uh, in his discussion with the police. Uh, they reflects that cannabis uh, threatens the liquor business. And uh, cannabis was uh, open people's minds. They might like, want to fight in national militaries, for instance. Well, the police uh, try to turn Eddie to an informant. Mm. He refuses to cooperate. Three months in prison then. <clears throat> okay. Uh, near his release day, the police inform Eddie that uh, they're deporting him to the United States. He objects. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he fear, figures Americans will bust him for dealing uh, drugs abroad, back in his home country. <sighs> so after a little back and forth with the Copenhagen cops, uh, the Danish police escort Eddie to uh, the airport and deport him to London? I don't know. Final kick in the pan. Can't come back to Denmark for 10 years. But even worse, unbelievably, and unbeknownst to Eddie, the Danish police have sabotaged his entry into England. <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> Hold that image. He's on an airplane heading into London. Oh, because uh, this casual conversation be between friends uh, naturally winds down like right about here. So, uh, Om Shante. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Our most flowing interview so far. So after I swam near O'Manuel's Beach Shack, uh, I feel fresh energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charles and I uh, space out on our third and final motorbike trip together. Uh, Charles, huh? Experienced dirt biker? Oh, yeah. So he drives while I'm on the riding the back. This time we cruise south from Anjuna Beach. Uh, there's now a small bridge over the river that uh, coming in Baga Beach where we parked the bike for a while. <laughs> and if you she crosses and by giving a, a couple of cents <laughs> in, to a guy in a canoe. Uh, Oh, oh, what? Heaps of garbage as high as on my chest. We follow the riverbank on the Baga side of the uh, creek. Ugh, 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 ugh. <laughs> like when they said on huh, this refuge, 
breeds malaria and dengue. Mass trash tourism. Hmm. At its worst, so. Oh. Yeah. The grown people made that deal with the devil. <clears throat> uh, traded off eternal, pristine beauty, laid back lifestyle for short term power, money. Obnoxious. Every man for himself. Consciousness. Uh, hissing. <laughs> like. Uh, Cold-blooded reptiles uh, with forked tongues rule the gateways of India in the present day. Dismal hippie scene. How uninviting can you get? <laughs> well, alas, let's talk about it. The advent of the... T Charter flights in 1987, unregulated flights. Uh, don't bother changing planes in Bombay. Fly right in to go. Millions of straight tourists mercilessly suffocated. The small, organic, hip, uh, hippie trip in go. Charter flights from Europe ruined the wild and Beautiful atmosphere, beach umbrella to beach umbrella. Today, go packed uh, with uh, straight tourists like sardines in a tin. Middle class, lower class, British, Russian, German, French. Mm. Well, um, well, I'm interviewing Eddie. This is the 2008-2009 season, so I'll talk about that year. 750 charter flights <laughs> descending into Goa. <laughs> These are direct, non-stop flights. <laughs> Don't change planes in Bombay, just yeah. 